Now, let's practice counting backwards in tenths or hundredths. So first, we have 0 0.16, 0 0.15, then 0 0.14. So what are the next seven numbers in this sequence? Well, we can see that we're counting back in hundredths because it's the hundredths digit that's changing. The only thing we need to change is 0 0.10 because we don't usually write zeros on the end of decimals. For 0 0.10, all this zero tells us is that we don't have any hundredths, but 0 0.1 tells us this as well, so we don't need to write zeros on the end of decimals. So, let's think about this question and let's show place value counters so that we can understand what's happening. We start with 0 0.16, so that's one tenth and six hundredths. We're taking away one hundredth each time, so then we get to 0 0.1 or one tenth. But to keep on counting back in hundredths, we need to exchange our tenth for ten hundredths, and then we can continue counting back until we get to 0 0.07 or seven hundredths. Now, 1.05, 1.04, 1.03. What are the next numbers in this sequence? Well, again, we're counting back in hundredths, and you can see that counting back in hundredths isn't much more difficult than counting back in ones. The only thing we need to change is 1.00, because if you have a decimal point, and then zeros on the end of a number, you have a whole number. So 1.00 would usually just be written as one. And again, we can show place value counters to see what's happening. We start with 1.05, so that's one whole, no tenths, and five hundredths. We're counting back in hundredths, but when we get to one whole, we need to exchange our one whole for ten tenths, and then because we're counting back in hundredths, we need to take one of those tenths and exchange it for ten hundredths. So now we can keep on counting back in hundredths until 0 0.96 or nine tenths and six hundredths. 3.25, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.29, 3.23. So what comes next? Again, we're counting back in hundredths, but rather than writing 3.20, we can just write 3.2, because all the zero tells us is that we don't have any hundredths, but 3.2 also tells us this. We don't need zeros on the end of decimals. Again, we can use place value counters to see what's happening. We start with 3.25, so that's three holes, two tenths, and five hundredths. We're counting back in hundredths, so when we get to 3.2, we have three holes and two tenths. But to count back in hundredths, we need to take one of our tenths counters and exchange it for ten hundredths counters. Then we can keep on counting back in hundredths until we get to 3.16, or three holes, one tenth, and six hundredths. Now, 3.25, 3.15, What are the next seven numbers in this sequence? Well, this one's slightly different, because we're counting back in tenths rather than in hundredths. But, again, we can use place value counters to see what's happening. 3.25 is three holes, two tenths, and five hundredths, and this time we're counting back in tenths, so the five hundredths is going to stay the same. When we've taken away two tenths, we get to 3.05, or three holes and five hundredths, but then to take away tenths, we need to exchange one of our holes for ten tenths. Then we can keep on subtracting tenths or counting back until we get to 2.35, or two holes, 
three tenths and five hundredths. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope that was helpful. If you're a teacher or a parent then please subscribe or go to keystage2maths.com to download resources for this lesson and many more. That's all for now, I'll see you in the next video.